Hello Bees fans and for the last time this season, welcome to Live from the Hive. As the Bees host Sutton United on the last day of the 2021 season, coming up on our Live from the Hive pre-match show, we catch up with first team coach Simon Bassey as he previews this afternoon's clash. We take a look back at the last time the Bees met the U's, and we have all of the action from Tuesday night's win over Maidenhead United. There's plenty to come, so sit back, relax, and get in the mood for this afternoon's match. Before we take a look back at the last time these two sides met, on behalf of everyone from Barnet Football Club, we'd like to congratulate Sutton United on winning the National League title. The Bees will give the U's a guard of honour ahead of the match this afternoon. Let's remind ourselves of the last time the two sides met at Gander Green Lane. First team coach Simon Bassey was delighted with his size performance on Tuesday night as the Bees beat Maidenhead United 2-0. Now he'll be hoping we can back it up with a big performance on the last day of the season. We caught up with him ahead of the visit of the champions. Simon, last game of the season, we welcome the champions to the High of London. Is it about building on everything that we did so well on Tuesday night? Yeah, I... Uh... I think so, you know, to to have the fans back in Tuesday night was brilliant. Uh, to give them a clean sheet and some two goals and a, and a decent performance overall, I think, was, was brilliant for us. You know, certainly a tougher test we could not ask for for the last game of the season, but one we're really looking forward to. And as I say, to test ourselves against the champions um, is a great test for us and a good honour. So. You know, we'll give it our best shot. The Sutton have already won the title, but they'll be keen to end their season on on a high on a high themselves. So it should be an entertaining one tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, you'd think so. I mean, they don't play any other way. You know, I watched them a lot this year. I know the manager and the assistant manager really well. Um, humble group, honest group, hard working group. You know, everything we look to need to be, they're it. They do this league well, very well. Hence, they've been promoted, um, and they won't come here and, and, and take their foot off the pedal, uh, no doubt. So, for us, it's about you know fighting our best fight and our biggest fight's our last one and, and one we're looking forward to. 
it's not a conversation anyone at the football club probably wants to have, but is there an added motivation to potentially come off the bottom tomorrow if we can pip Kingsley? Yeah, listen, always listen every game. We try and get three points and, and where that three points takes us, we never know. Um, certainly when I came in to the building, you know, we, we hope to climb the table. We haven't quite managed to do that, but we've picked, we've put enough points up to get close. So if we could finish that off, then, you know, a small victory maybe, but certainly one that we won't be proud of. Michael Petrasso's obviously gone back just slightly ahead of schedule because of the COVID situation yeah. in Canada. Just a word on him, he's obviously had an impressive season, finishing, likely to finish the club's top goal scorer. Yeah, listen, he's, uh, he's done great, Mike. You know, I've, a player that I've watched probably since he first come over here at Queen's Park Rangers uh, and been a fan of his. Uh, took a bit of time to get going when I came in, you know, get fitness issues and so on, but, you know, always carries a threat, you know, carries a goal threat, carries an assist, you know, 1v1's got magic in his feet um, and we wish him well, you know, I've had a good chat with him, certainly when I first came in and, and yesterday when, when he was departing us. Um, about where his career goes from here and you know I hope really hope that he takes ownership of that because you know I still think Michael can play at a good level. It would be really nice to finish with a win tomorrow again in front of the fans it's always been the, the message that we want to finish on a high and so we can all look ahead to a, a good summer. Yeah absolutely you know we We've got open, the other stand open to them tomorrow as well, which will be obviously mean more people in, which will be brilliant. Um, you know, if they can make as much noise as the 600 or so that were, were here on Tuesday night, that would be great. Um, and I think that they responded to the players, you know, whatever frame of mind supporters come in, and, and I'm pretty sure they, they were trying to be positive with it. You know, they respond to how the team does. and. Thought the team started well the other night and the supporters responded to that. We hope to do the same again. Um, I've been a supporter of a football club. You know, all you ever ask is your team to give 100%. Um, and that's what I ask for the boys. Uh, and on a, on a whole, they've done that for me. So one big test left, one that we'll be giving 100% to be successful in. And I'm sure if we do that, the supporters will clap us off the pitch, you know, and that's all we can do is leave everything out there, you know, and as I said to the players before, uh, the minimum uh, requirement is the maximum effort, and if you do that, you know, and with the quality we've got in the team, you know, I'm sure we can give Sutton a good game tomorrow, and I'm one that I'm really looking forward to. It was absolutely brilliant to welcome the Bee Army back to the Hive London on Tuesday night, and what a performance the Bees put in for the fans as they defeated Mainhead United 2-0. Let's remind ourselves of how all of the action unfolded. Barnett attacking the Bees Terrace, and we're underway at the Hive. Immediately, Maidenhead looks to play it forward up towards Orsi, but Richards Everton is across quickly to deal with it. The ball is with Skeffington, who was man of the match away at Torquay, as voted for by the fans on social media. The Millwall Loney. Here's Harry Taylor, who made his 150th appearance for the Bees down in Devon. Wordsworth heads it forward towards Adeloy to try and get it on the end of, but Wiltshire just hooks that out of play. Crossing opportunity here for Beard. In towards Harry Taylor, gets his head onto it. But it goes wide of the post. Still searching for that first goal in black and amber is Harry Taylor. But it wasn't too far away there, just a few inches on the forehead off target. Corner is in. Has headed goalwards again by Kefalas. Just wide, couldn't quite angle that one goalwards. There's almost a chance for him to make it back to back goal scoring appearances for the Greek. As we take another look at that now, good delivery. Must did find a little bit of space, but he knows he probably should have done better. It was a good chance for Femis Kefalas. He, as you say, picked up that bit of space and just glanced his head and just wide. Didn't quite make the contact he would have liked. Femis Kefalas really 
pretty well there. Now see what words were. Towards that formation, Clark skips in, digs it in towards Adelaide, but too close to the goalkeeper. And the flag is up. Wordsworth on the stretch did just clip the maiden head man. Adeloy does well. Sips it through towards Harry Taylor. Has Efron Mason Clark running in for support. Tries to play back to him. Here's Adeloy. Strikes the maiden head man. Barnett attacking with intent and attacking with purpose in search of the opening goal. of the opportunities and have certainly troubled James Holden more than Adam Parks has had work to do. Clipped in towards Adeloy. Going to drop here for Mason Carter who just slips at the, the wrong time. The clearance from Sheckleford is poor and it's straight to Richard Everton and now Mason Clark can run at the maidenhead defence again. Gets a shot away. It's comfortable for Holden who holds on to it on the a little bit of a moist surface as the temperatures drop and there's a little bit of moisture in the air. Sprinklers weren't used at half time, but that was simple enough for the Reading Loney. His beard. Skeffington. Feet of Mason Clark. Gets it into the box. Crossing opportunity. Good cross. Just headed away. Good drop here for Wordsworth. Here's Adeloy. Gets it on his stronger foot. Good save from Holden. And that will lift the bees. Holden, the Reading Loney. Boosted by News. Recently, that he'll get another year at the Royals. Corner comes in from Wordsworth. Not quite sure too many Barnet players were ready. Here's Skeffington. Mason Clark out again to the corner taker Wordsworth. Good delivery in towards Kefalas. Just headed away before it could reach the young Greek defender slash midfielder. Another corner to come though. Skeffington to take this one on this near side. And he comes towards Harry Taylor. Oh, that could have gone anywhere. Ricocheted off of a main head man. Another corner to come. What a great ball by the Millwall Loney, Sam Skeffington. And you thought Beard was just going to arch it towards the far corner. And it looked like it bounced off a combination of a main head man and Kefalas for trickling wide. His pressure keeps on coming. Another corner to come. Skeffington takes. A bit deeper this time. The pressure alive though. Might need a little bit of support. You can see to throw in, and that will be a, a real let off for the main head. Get away. 
It's Skeffington. To feet to Kefalas. Kefalas for the words worth. What a, here's a chance. Harry Taylor cuts back. Will he get a shot away, Harry Taylor? He does! It's a first goal for Harry Taylor! 151 games in the making. Harry Taylor is off the mark for the bees. And Barnet a 1-0 up in front of the B Army. What a moment for Harry Taylor. I said at the start of the game that it had been coming for him. He'd had so many chances recently. He does so well to work it onto his right foot. And he plants it past the goalkeeper. Absolutely no chance. And the roar of the B Army. And do we take the lead? Brilliant for Harry Taylor. I cannot think of a man who deserves the goal more than him after the season he's had. And you can see by the celebrations just how influential a figure he is in the Barnet dressing room. Every outfield player there to celebrate with him. And Barnet take the lead as their second half start deserves. Here is another look at it. Cuts back onto his left foot. And then his right foot and finds away past Holden and the Bees lead Barnet one maidenhead nil and the crowd obviously doing playing their part as well it was just the second goal Barnet fans have seen in person this season they grab a third for the B Army and a second tonight here's Kepalas urge the sheep does simple for Holden there right down his throat to clip this one in. Skipping to flick that over. Ella Keach and now drives into the opposition half. Plays into the feet of Adeloy who manages to keep hold of possession. Still somehow Adeloy skips away. Through to Wordsworth. What a goal that is! It's 2-0 to the Bees. Anthony Wordsworth has the Barnet fans in raptures, but that was all made by the persistence of Tommy Adeloy as the Bees counter from one end to another. Barnet have doubled their lead here. Barnet 2 made an head nil. What brilliant play by Tommy Adeloy. As you said, persistent. He never let the ball get away from him. It's an imperfect pass from Tommy Adeloy. Finds it through to Anthony Wordsworth who sweeps it home. Started with a little neat flick over the head from Skeffington. He found his way through to Adeloy, who somehow surrounded by Maidenhead bodies, slips it through, a well-timed run from Wordsworth, and he finds it way to slot it past James Holden. And now the Bees fans are in fine voice. Barnett are readying a change. Could well be the introduction of Michael Petrasso. He'll get a good reception, Aaron. And Lloyd doing really well up there as the, the sole man up top, and he's done really well there. Wordsworth has a go. Might just drop breath from Mason Clark. Cuts back onto his right foot. It's a wonderful save in true from Holden. His beard cuts away. Will he get a shot away? Can't quite get the ball out from under his foot. And Mason Clark has his effort blocked. The Barnet players are piling on the pressure here. Breathless stuff at this times. Is a, this is brilliant from the B Army as well. They're sounding their appreciation. Brilliant double save by the main Ned goalkeeper. First one Wordsworth, that was a stinging effort. And then to get back up again and stop from Mason Clark. Great double save. I hope our neighbours on Camrose Avenue haven't missed us too much because they are certainly not getting an early night this evening. In comes the corner kick, far post. Is where it was aimed, but well claimed. Well claimed and simply true for Holden. He's lining himself up for it. He's going to take his dance box. It's come from the parks. He does. He starts the barn encounter. And then Bernie back in field towards the floor. Picks it up and now Bernie comes forward again. And then the late challenge running from the end, but Bernie still manages to find Mason Clark. He's trying to run at Sheckleford. Cross in, Patrasso's there! Oh, everyone thought it was in from this side of the ground. And I I don't know how he hasn't put it in, but he hasn't. And it still remains 2-0, but the Barnet fans are up on their feet. 
I don't know how it's not gone in, Aaron. I was just sat on the chair, just tapping a couple of lines to the match report. And I jumped up because I was certain it's gone in, but... What a great move again from Barney and brilliant from Mason Clark. He's playing with so much confidence. It's great to see. It's a great ball into the box on a plate for Petrasso, who just heads wide. That's all we have time for on our final live from the Hive pre-match show of the 2020-21 campaign. On behalf of myself and the rest of the Live from the Hive team, thank you so much for tuning in this season. There's been ups and there's been downs, but your support has been absolutely phenomenal. I'll now hand you over to our commentary team for the final time this season. It's Aaron Pullen and myself, Adam Rose.